Rise of No Genius. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. And uh, my name is Arun Kumar. And uh, I have a part of And uh, uh, so essentially we are going to talk about... Uh, how? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the idea is just to understand the interesting things about No Genius. And before that, any, any no JS experts? Okay, at least one minute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, how many of you use Node.js? Uh, Node.js. Okay. Obviously, I am not a Node.js guy. I am I'm from Rings background. So, any tough questions? Um, and, uh, this is what I am going to talk about today. So, three concepts. Um, first, uh, understand what Node.js is about. And uh, second thing, some internal support Node.js. And uh, the community of Node.js. And uh, in, uh, what is future. Um, we will see, I think the resolution is. So, this is the definition given by the community. Um, some people say it's given to Diego. Uh, right now, I'm not going to explain it. So, we'll see what Event Diego means in the coming slides. And uh, somebody say uh, it's served as JavaScript. And somebody even say it's microphone layer. And uh, yeah. what I figured out is uh, never try to define Node.js yourself. Uh, it's because the same community says all of them are wrong. So, you cannot define Node.js, but instead, and try to explain Node.js, what Node.js is. Uh, so, the next few, few slides, uh, I'm going to explain some programs, so how Node.js is created uh, from the ground. Uh, so, Google came up with this thing called uh, E8. Um, so, it's um, basically used to run the JavaScript outside the browser. So, and Chrome uses it. Internally, it uses V to run the JavaScript, but you can also use it to run JavaScript outside the browser. And uh, it's very powerful. Typically, JavaScript, um, we think it's very slow. Um, but uh, uh, the smart team from Google, uh, they made V8 very powerful. And uh, this is from a guy uh, who improved JavaScript performance by eight times. Can you name the play? And, um, and how V8 runs JavaScript? And uh, so I have uh, two programs here. Uh, number one, uh, sum.js. So it simply has a function and it uh, takes two arguments and it simply sums and returns it. And there is other function on the right side uh, which simply prints a hello world to the console. And we'll uh, see how to run these two sample JS programs using V8. And this is a sample program, not a complete program. Um, so don't try to understand it. Just see the first line. So it says include V8. And uh, so here, what I'm doing, I'm just uh, getting the first argument and uh, getting the file content from the first parameter and then doing something. And so you compile it, and then you how do you run it? Node space uh, some dot js. So this is a C plus file which we created. Okay. So I have named it as Node CPP, and you compile it, so you get some program. And uh, so this is how I execute this file. Node space some dot js, and some dot js is the first argument, right? So our simple program get the content from the from js and compiles it, and uh, prints the output to the screen. Okay, so how this explains how powerful the V8 is. Um, so, but we cannot run our print JS here. Uh, that's because V8 is just a JavaScript. What it can do? It can create functions. It can uh, do basic JavaScript. JavaScript itself doesn't print the console. Right? So, it's just a browser thing. And it's very bad. And, uh, Uh, but we can still do that using V8. And uh, so, how to do that? Um, uh, using V8, uh, what we can do is we can call a C function 
from the JavaScript. For example, we have print up function that prints to a screen, right? Um, so what we can do is we can interface console dot log, console dot log, and print print function. So that we call console dot log, and uh, so it actually is combined, sorry, linked with the print up function, and it can print uh, what else you you pass, uh, but that's uh, you have to learn that because that's not a scope of this. And uh, so basically what we have right now, um, simple JavaScript program and uh, which can print when we interface it. Um, so what we can do is we can add more features to it. There are a lot of C libraries available to pass the HTTP, file handling, TCP, DNS solver. And uh, let's say we somehow make uh, DC plus plus functions work in JavaScript by having the bridge. And uh, once uh, we add all, all those features, uh, so we will be having uh, our node.cpp, our node, our node, .cpp, our, our node our executable file. Uh, so it's like <laughs> node.js. Uh, we can call it, we have built something like node.js. Um, so we can compare with our program with uh, Ruby or Java or Python. Uh, because typically, what it does, uh, so we have a runtime engine and we can access file, we can access database and uh, we can do socket programming um, and that's what Ruby, Java and Python does right? so same is the case for our program too um, uh, but uh, let's see what Microsoft is saying uh, we did this 10 years ago so can you guess what they have done similar to this? Yeah, so correct. Uh, so it's called uh, JScript. Um, so Microsoft they introduced this ten years ago, um, having uh, servers. I mean JavaScript under the server side, and you can even do uh, file handling. Uh, for example, create this code, right? So what it does, it creates uh, active object and. Uh, it's creating a folder called Windows. Don't do that. And uh, it's in fact shipped with all the Windows. You don't have to install anything. You just run it using this. So you just run through the file.js and uh, you can have uh, something like Node.js. So essentially, what I'm saying is uh, Node.js is nothing new. So having server side JavaScript. Uh, I mean that it's in fact even before uh, uh, this JS, JS thing. And uh, so, yeah, so in 10 minutes, uh, in, in 5 minutes, I've shown uh, how to build something in Node.js. And But it's not as simple as, as it seems. Um, because the guy, uh, he's the guy behind Node.js, Ryan, Ryan Dahl. And uh, he in fact spent 6 months to even to come with the first release and uh, so he added more sugar to it because what we have right now is already there it's not just JS we have a uh, lot of other stuff too right and uh, so obviously to make it popular uh, so he had to add a lot of sugar and uh, what all they so it's called uh, event at IO uh, using these keywords um, so all of a sudden uh, and it will become popular. So, how many of you are raised with? Can I recognize this guy from the website? Yes. Yeah. And so, he is the guy behind Rails. And uh, so, after building Rails, so he has become popular all of a sudden. And people call this guy, the writer, writer guy, he is uh, Ryan Dog. And he is DHS. And uh, we will see what we can do with uh, Node.js. Uh, so, I have shown you, right? So, it's like, uh, typical Ruby program um, or uh, Java or uh, whatever. Um, you can build web applications and uh, socket programming and uh, you can build IDEs. In fact, pretty much everything. And uh, because it's just a JavaScript, right, so you just have to learn Node.js by JavaScript. And this is an interesting uh, slide which I found in there. And uh, learning JavaScript. 
uh, typically there are a lot of languages out there and uh, to, for a language to survive it should be very easy to grasp um, uh, for example look at the graph right so initially what happens uh, people are struggling to learn and uh, as time progress they are not able to learn at all so i'm not going to tell what the uh, uh, solution is yeah, so to make a language popular, it should be very simple. And uh, what is this was better? How, how many of you have heard this concept? Was this better? What's it? What's it? Was is better. Okay. So it's a study some ten years ago, and uh, what it tries trying to say is um, how the software you build is accepted by the community. Uh, you add a lot of features or uh, I mean so what it's trying to say is in order for a software to be successful it should be very simple and uh, being simple is the uh, worst part and uh, sorry having less features is the worst part and if, if it's simple people tend to adopt to it quickly because People have a lot of modules, or people have a lot of plugins, people extend a lot, people contribute a lot, and uh, that's when uh, the software is very popular. And uh, so, right now, learning Node.js is nothing because it's simply JavaScript, but instead, what you should learn is um, it's the modules that that's built on top of Node.js. Um, so, in Java, we have uh, JDE, all those modules, right? And similarly, um, Ruby, we have a lot of frameworks, so it's a framework we have to learn. <coughs> but it's good to learn the internals, and uh, that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, so, two concepts I'm going to talk about uh, threads vs events and uh, the synchronous IO. Um, basically, these two concepts made the Node.js uh, the thing. Um, so this is a sample program uh, which explains uh, even that what even that program is. So for the first line, what I'm doing is I'm deleting a file. Okay, fs dot uh, unlink. Uh, so I'm passing the file to be deleted. Um, so what is the second argument? Is the callback. Okay. Um, so what it does is typically what we will do fs dot delete of some file and we forget it right so the next if at all the next line executes it's like after the file is getting deleted the next line is getting executed but in in the event world what happens is um, everything is uh, postponed into the queue uh, for example in this case if you put fs dot and sorry delete of some uh, uh, some string what will happen is it will po post the task into the queue, and once that is done, after that it is getting executed. It will get executed. Okay, and uh, so and this is another example uh, to get a rec record from the database. What I am doing, user I find by name of uh, John. So I am passing the name. I want the record. It's a typical ORM. That's how you do ORM. And typically, what we do, we assign the return value to a local variable and use it, right? Um, but here, instead, what we are doing is we are passing a second argument called print user. So what happens is when user dot find by name completes or when it gets the uh, record, it calls this function. And instead, what I'm doing, I'm using the same function, same name again. And uh, so note that even console.log is uh, non blocking. Meaning, in for i equal to 1 to 1000, you do console.log of some big string, um, the entire for loop will get executed, but still the console.log will be right into the string. And, uh, and we'll see what we get by putting everything into event at loop. Um, so this is a sample function, forget about all the first two lines and uh, essentially what it does is I am creating a web server when you hit the URL with uh, the slash uh, what we are doing is 
we are sending the hello world to the browser. Okay, and this line is inside the set time mode. So when I hit local post colon 3000 word arm, I'll get 3000 hello world after 2 seconds because this line is present inside set time mode. Okay, uh, that's okay. But, but what's interesting is, let's say 1000 requests come in at a time. Like you do A-B testing and uh, you fire up 1000 queries and uh, how long it will take to complete the entire uh, 1000 requests? It depends on the browser. Yeah, so assume that, uh, you know, I'm not talking about the client side. So let's say, talk about server side. Forget about all the latency, all those stuff. So a single request is going to take two seconds, okay? But I'm entirely hitting thousand requests. Now, how long will it take? <coughs> yeah, so it's again two seconds, if not 2.5 or something. The How it works is, um, so I'm doing set time out of something. It's like uh, sleeping. Okay, so a request comes in, and uh, obviously this function will get called. And inside what I'm, inside what I'm doing is, uh, I won't sleep for uh, two seconds to call uh, hello world. I'll post the task to a queue. Like I'll delegate the task to somebody and ask him that okay, after two seconds send the hello world to the client. And then immediately I will look for the other request. So, thousand requests come come in. I'm collecting all the requests, passing it, delegating it. They will take each and there will be hundred events that will be running parallelly, and uh, each and every event will send the uh, hello world to the client simultaneously. And uh, that's the power of event group. And uh, uh, but. Don't think that without event loop, uh, it's going to take 2,000 seconds. But uh, with the help of uh, event loop, I made it to two seconds. Um, Arun, uh, quick question. You yeah. said it is returned simultaneously. Yeah. What is it possible? It's an event loop, right? It's a queue. It's a queue, yes. So it can't be simultaneous. Uh, it's a good question. So JavaScript does it have uh, JavaScript is a single thread uh, for the array, right? Yes. JavaScript is a single product. Yes. So how would uh, concurrency is possible? Um, can I talk about it later? Uh, there are slides coming. It, it, it talks about how um, internally concurrency is achieved. Okay, so I'll talk about it. Okay. And uh, most of the uh, concepts, Node.js concepts, you have to think only when concurrency matters. Let's say you have a web app where you get um, maybe five requests per second, you don't have to worry because anyway you are going to serve the request in one or two seconds per user and uh, uh, you really don't have to worry about how to scale all this stuff but only when concurrency matters think about these concepts event programming, terror programming, asynchronous I.O. all those stuff uh, but, but to, uh, I will come back to your question uh, but to understand, uh, I mean if you took a, the, look at the same program Instead of set time mode, what what other option I have? In typically, how do you do it in Java, Ruby, or any language? Because they natively don't support eventer system. So what else can we do to achieve the same thing? Any guess? Spawn or thread? Yeah. So what I can do is I can run this line inside another thread. Right? Spawn a different thread or something. Uh, yeah, fork a different process. Um, you can still achieve the concurrency uh, with the current concepts with all the languages or all the frameworks. Um, but what is the difference between achieving the same thing with thread or with unit system? And uh, this program might help you to understand it. And okay, so here I have two two functions called dump. The first version, uh, it's printing i hundred times, but that block is inside uh, the thread. But JavaScript doesn't have threading, so 
uh, so this is some garbage data which I put and uh, you can think in terms of any other language. Okay, here I am doing the print of i in the event loop. Okay. So, both of them are going to run parallelly and uh, it's going to print uh, uh, i under times. Uh, but what is the difference? So, why even event programming is uh, popular? And we will see it. Uh, first, first problem, what will happen in threading is, whenever a new thread is created, okay, all the local variables that's available at the four point will be available to uh, the threading block. Okay, so we have 100 threads running. Each and every thread will have its own local copy of uh, all the local variables. It's in stack. Okay, so we have infinite variables in the dump function declared. There's too much memory within uh, each and every thread. But in case of event loop, in the the Local variables from dump is not cloned into uh, this event block. So all I'm doing is I'm trying to save the memory. Okay, and uh, <coughs> so that's one problem. So with, with the event loop, uh, we try we have tried to reduce the memory. So the process which uh, it uses event loop takes less less memory. And there is another problem uh, with threading. So what happens is, uh, I just now told, right, uh, each and every thread will have uh, infinite copies of local variables. So whenever context switching, the processor switches the, uh, in threading what happens? So actually, the process switches the context, right, from one thread to another thread. And uh, at that time, what happens? It's going to uh, uh, pull in all the local variables from the stack and then spawn a new thread and that context switching is heavy and but here uh, evented loop that's not the case because uh, there, there is no context switch but I will come back to the <coughs> events are lightweight because we have seen right uh, it's it simply have calls another function that is what uh, event does and uh, so another problem is whenever a thread completes, it has to remember what is the next line to get executed. So in this case, uh, let's say the thread ends, it has to come to the next line. Okay, so it's called thread stack. So it has to remember where it should go when the thread is complete. But in case of events, you don't have to remember uh, where to return because events is something like uh, uh, when you are done deleting with the file, call the event. So that event will end immediately after calling the callback. So it, it, it don't have to, it doesn't have to return to the um, call function. So this is another example. Uh, so it's a benchmark between Apache and Nginx. It's a it's really popular <coughs> comparison. Um, in the x-axis, what we have is uh, number of connections, um, meaning. Uh, we have a single Apache process, a single Node JS or Nginx process. We keep on eating Apache and Nginx. Okay. And uh, as the number of requests per second increases, in the y-axis, what you see is the memory consumed by the process. Okay. And, uh, so you can see that Apache is taking more memory. But Nginx, uh, it stays flat. So throughout the process, Nginx is taking less memory and uh, that's one thing that's cool with event programming um, uh, but with good there comes a lot of bad parts so this is an example um, um, well, so see I have a function called f inside what I'm doing is I'm simply returning a sorry I'm throwing an error right um, in line 7 and 8, what I'm doing is I'm uh, creating a uh, IO and uh, how many seconds then goes into map.random. So, what happens is uh, two timeouts will, will get created. Okay? Um, but when it, okay, 
let me know this. This is the error you will get. Because inside this function, what you are doing, uh, you are just throwing the error. Okay? So this is the error. Throw new of error at sample.js line 4. Yeah, sample.js in line 4, we have an error. Uh, but which caused the error? Is it line 7 or line 8? You cannot guess it. Because the stack trace doesn't have it. The reason is set time mode. What it does is it simply creates a queue and uh, it it puts it, it just creates a heap and then it says okay call this function after uh, five seconds or ten seconds and that, that even too we, we just know saw right it doesn't keep track of all the stack trace and all so it doesn't know uh, the stack and uh, that's one problem with even that program. Debugging is written. And uh, this is another program. And uh, try to understand in five minutes. Any of you who got the program? <coughs> I'm sure you won't get it because uh, two reasons. Mm, one is the program is complex. And second thing is I deliberately made it properly complex. Making the font size and uh, in the color them. Okay. And uh, so in the synchronous world, this is how you do it. So you see what I'm doing. So initially inside I have this called uh, capitalize. Uh, so assume that cap is going to return uh, the capitalize version of whatever you are passing. And again you are calling a bold. So you are actually trying to bold. And again you are trying to print console.log. If any exception happens, um, you see, okay. this is in the synchronous world. Yeah, everything looks good. But the same program, when I try to do it in a synchronous world, it's becoming complex. The, the reason is, <coughs> sorry. and so if you look at it here, what I'm doing, uh, I have a function called catalyze, which accepts a text. So that text is going to capitalize. Okay. So um, once I capitalize this, I'll uh, call this function because the capitalize function is asynchronous, right? It's not going to return you the capitalized version immediately. So the only way is pass another function to capitalize. So what will happen when the capitalize is done with uh, this process? It's going to call this function and uh, with, with the result and the result is stored in the result one okay so now I have a cap list version and with that what I'm going to do I have to uh, bold it so what I'm doing I'm again calling this bold function okay um, I'm passing the cap list version uh, so again it's not interest because it's not going to return the bold as version immediately. So what I have to do, create another callback and uh, uh, so this function will get executed when bold is done and I will have the final version of the result too. And uh, then, yeah. But you still can solve this problem because um, uh, there are a lot of uh, other solutions available. Um, for example, uh, what you can do is instead of DP nesting, you can use these libraries available. Yeah, you just <coughs> search for uh, Node.js patterns, uh, you will get all of all those functions. Okay. Another problem is with exception handling. So here, if you see it, what I'm doing is I'm just deleting a file and. Uh, uh, if the file, if there is any exception, I am actually saying uh, console.log unable to delete. Okay? Uh, but it's bad, don't do this. Any guess why? Because the error also would be asynchronous, right? Well, Even the error would be asynchronous. Even if there is an error, the system won't return it immediately. It will speed to the callback. Yeah, so yeah, correct. The, the reason is, so try catch. Uh, what I'm trying to uh, do here is I'm just putting something in the event 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 loop, okay? 
and the catch uh, no, no, i am catching uh, whatever error happens while putting in the event loop but inside the event loop if something happens this won't know so what we have to do is the callback typically will return you the error and inside this you have to handle all the exceptions so that's another problem with uh, uh, this and uh, so now that we have learned uh, 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 what is event driven uh, we will see what is asynchronous okay so in node.js uh, it's a single thread application uh, because javascript itself is a single thread right so it cannot run two things parallel okay and uh, so to solve that what happens is let's say you have 100 events in the event loop 100 events in the event loop and to us it looks it looks like parallel 100 events are being processed okay uh, but it's not the case um, so uh, let's say you i initially showed a function function right say set time out of uh, do something but if i put sleep there what will happen is you won't get the uh, entire result in um, two seconds because sleep actually blocks it okay so um, in node js what happens is uh, there is always only one event loop that's running meaning um, uh first one event it will process once it's done it move on to the uh next event so when you have a, such a such a restricted system the event a single event cannot actually do uh, uh complex stuff it cannot actually do io all the stuff because if it blocks all the other events also is getting blocked right and uh, so so what we need uh, need is we need to have a mechanism where uh, uh, the uh, the call the call which you are trying to make should behave like asynchronous for example let's say you delete a file okay and uh, let's say it's happening in an event instead of you waiting till the file deletes would it be good if the operating system notifies you when the uh, file is deleted so and uh, so to answer your question and uh, it's the operating system that runs its own threads that will actually notify you uh, when the event is done and epoll kq select all, all, all of these things um, so to handle asynchronous io um, these are the system level calls so using these things asynchronous is maintained Uh, but the problem is there are still certain function calls which doesn't do proper proper asynchronous for example let's say you have to watch uh, if a file is modified or not okay uh, it still has its own thread uh, there is no proper mechanism for you to notify when the file is modified so there is separate thread internally that's going on that will keep hold for whether the file is modified or not and uh, Um, that note for you maybe ask the question because the other you won't have time later they don't have questions yeah any questions okay. so it's okay. supposed to end at 11:45 right yeah this okay. should be ending without time for questions mm-hmm. what i found is before choosing a plugin or module uh, you have to really investigate what the module does um i found a mysql plugin um, which is not doing things asynchronously instead what it's doing is it's again creating its uh, own fork and then does so while choosing a plugin try to understand whether it's really doing things asynchronously okay. uh, so now that we know uh, how to do concurrency in, in two many ways one way which we have seen using events and uh, threads Some, sometimes uh, events are not possible for example the uh, watch file um, there is no way for the operating system or something else to notify you when the uh, asynchronous way so that time we have to use threads and uh, how to use threads you know javascript doesn't i mean no js you cannot use threads right so what you can do is you can create a c c function that does threading and then you can expose the interface via JavaScript. So threading can be achieved even with uh, no JS. Or simply you can fork a new process. 
Node.js allows you to do that. You can put a new process and then fire the CPU intensive task there. Okay. I can even have a separate process. Uh, typically, uh, web application, what will happen, it will listen to some particular port, right? Port 80 or something. And uh, um, <coughs> um, but the problem is, the Node.js process cannot run on multi-core, meaning you can use only one processor. Uh, so how to uh, achieve uh, full use of the CPU? You can have n processors, right? Uh, and even load balance. So a request comes to Apache and uh, or uh, some other load balancing server, and it can load balance to as many processes. So you can solve uh, uh, the concurrency, sorry, the multi-core. One core question, yeah. Let's say you, if you're setting up something like that. I have a system with, let's say, eight cores, okay. and then spawn eight processes to handle this. Now, let's say if I have some kind of uh, information that, is, that has to be shared across, some kind of shared state, like session and all. Okay. How do you go, how do you go around it? Or okay. do you share information across instances? Yeah, so typically web applications are stateless. Okay. So yeah, on site, on site. So they yeah. should be stateless, but um, yeah, 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 they should be stateless. Yeah. But most people wouldn't write. I mean, there are people who wouldn't write. So if they have to exchange information, what is the best possible solution? Yes. Yeah, I'll talk about the next point. Okay. And yeah, so to what he's saying is, a request comes in, it goes to one process. Okay. So it completes completes it, it draws the request and the returns it. Okay. And similarly, another request comes in, it can go to other process. Okay, but that's not possible always because sometimes the two process has to communicate each other. Okay, for example, IRC channels. So a lot of people will try to communicate uh, to a uh, one process. So IRC is like uh, a lot of people chatting, like kind of chatting, right? So all the request has to be routed to a single process. Okay, but uh, Node.js, yeah, you cannot do that. But that's when this uh, web workers, all those stuff coming. What you do is, um, there is something called domain sockets in Unix. Uh, using the domain sockets, uh, n processes can listen on a single uh, port. Okay? So let's say the uh, you have 10 processes and all the processes are uh, uh, listening at port 80. But ideally you cannot listen at po single port, but using domain sockets you can do it. And this web, web workers will actually help you to uh, message passing all the stuff is possible. So you don't have to really worry about uh, passing messages and all. So the internet take care. Okay. So that's uh, this is my last session. And uh, so we talk history about Node.js. So it all started in 2009. And uh, so that day he uh, he quit his job to work on it. I don't know how many of us will do something like that. And uh, he first presented uh, this in uh, JSCon. In fact, they for a slot. Uh, so, and finally, someone got it. And uh, he threw away the entire audience by building an ASH server, like chat server, in just four lines of code. And uh, that's how Node.js was introduced. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, a lot of people start inviting this guy. So he goes to Yahoo, he goes to Microsoft, Google, Microsoft, he goes to Google, and then he presenting it everywhere. And uh, right now, uh, it's very popular in GitHub. How many of you have used GitHub Twitter, Twitter Bootstrap? Okay. So it's a, a library to build quick websites. Uh, of course. The, if you look at the second thing, it's Node.js, so it's surpassed even uh, Rails, so it's very popular in GitHub. Uh, and then Microsoft, they came forward, and then they sponsored the, the Windows port of Node.js. Uh, it seems to run faster in Windows, I'm not sure really true, I'm not sure how much money is involved in there. Anyway, that's what Ryan says, it's, it seems faster than uh, uh, Windows. Um, okay, so let's talk about web frameworks. Uh, so the modules available. Um, so in Rails, I can think of 
टू थ्री वेबसाइट हमको सारे अपन सारे दो भी वर्ड रेल सिनेट रहा होगा सब जावा जे टू जी होगा सब पर इन केस ऑफ नोट जेस देर आर फोर्टी वेबसाइट हमको सारे अपन दैट्स बिकॉज़ इट्स वेरी सिंपल एंड इजी एक्शन एंड लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव लॉट ऑफ सब एंड डेटाबेस मॉड्यूल्स मोर एंड दिस इज एक्टिव फ्रॉम The, the line there itself. He says, "I wish for less hype." Probably, I don't know why it's popular. Maybe because of hype. Then that guy is wishing for less hype, and it's it's competitors. I told you right, JS and the, even JS dot net and the Ringo JS. These are all alternatives. So it's not like no JS is the only solution available. There are infinite solutions available, and uh, they don't even get good traction. Uh, this is the last thing. Uh, so Node.js is simply like cool things put together. Um, so V8 and uh, JavaScript, with server-side JavaScript in fact, and you have to do asynchronous all those stuff. Of course, that is better. And uh, still, uh, uh, um, it's. I don't feel it's like production ready. You can build tiny apps to build scalable applications, but I really haven't seen um, any big enterprise applications built using Node.js. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah, the mobile site. LinkedIn right. server side. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a tiny site. No, no, that's just one. And another yeah. one is yeah, Yahoo. Yahoo. Yeah, yeah, who's uh, yeah. live stand is big. Yeah. Not just so the entire hosting platform runs on Node.js. Yeah, Heroku um, supports it. it. And as you support it, so they, they, I mean, it, it's a little wrong to say that it's not ready. Maybe it's not, uh, com it's not in enough ready enough to be competing with Rails, something like that. No. But still ready enough to be serving some needs. No, the the, the reason I'm saying is, I found um, um, this code to be buggy. Meaning, uh, um, you host Node.js application to Heroku, and a lot of them it crashes. And uh, so there, I'm not saying. Uh, You don't have to use Node.js in the production because, as you said, LinkedIn is using it. They, in fact, actually use Rails. In fact, previously they had tool servers. They use the servers to for and increase the throughput by twice. So Node.js are still used in production, um, but not big enterprise application. That's what I mean by enterprise apps. So big apps, meaning hundreds of pages, lot of database calls, all those stuff. In fact, yeah. So that's about it. Any questions? Code is uh, better than HTML5 web workers. HTML5? Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, they are not one of the same, right? So HTML5 web workers is an API, right? That's an API. Yeah. Okay. The same thing you can do in even uh, no. I mean, there is a module for uh, Node.js. It's called web worker, and uh, it implements the same thing in Node.js. See, so Node.js uh, threading is uh, how Node.js threading is secure. How it differs from a uh, uh, web worker? Okay, so as I told you, right? So Node.js um, threading um, you have to talk about only when um, two events happen parallelly. Okay. Yeah, but uh, in Node.js, uh, Node how threading is achieved? Is are they using any descent pattern to achieve the threading? You mean you have to as a developer you are talking about, or in general you are talking about? Let's so say you want to use threading in Node. How do you do it? Yeah, in jQuery also uh, threading is now they they uh, threading is achieved in a different way. They use promise pattern. Yeah. So if at all you want to use threading, there are something like Node fibers and a uh, lot of threading modules available that you can use to achieve threading. But you don't have to really use threading because JavaScript is supposed to be single threaded. Instead, you have to think of something else. My question is, Node is threading is better than Webflow uh, or vice versa? As I told you, most days not having any threads. In times they use no, threads. Actually, in, in uh, promise case, they use three states for. Uh, Sorry. Three states. One is uh, promise uh, yeah. fulfilled or not fulfilled or it's failed or something. So, so you're talking about futures and promises. That's. Yeah. Uh, it's not just about threading. It's about how we are using that. Yeah. So it's possible to share yeah, the. You can have you can have promises and so the same code that you use for promises and uh, client side JavaScript can be ported to server side also. Oh, my question was. Uh, Possible to share the data with two thirds. Two thirds. Yeah. There is no such thing as a thread. That's what I was asking. There is no such.